Uh, how you guys doing? Welcome back to a new chapter of Old School Metal Vinyl. So, as you can guess from the title, uh, this was my cat, <laughs> unfortunately, just passed by. As you can guess from the title, this new chapter is gonna cover the history of one of the finest metal labels of all times. It's a record company that, in my humble opinion, holds the best uh, quality slash number of releases ratio. I'm talking about the legendary Death Like Silence Productions from Norway. Now, I will not bore you with too many details concerning the history behind the label and its founder, since I'm fairly sure that uh, whoever follows this channel will be familiar with the whole Norwegian black metal scene drama, what happened to Euronymous and the other guys as a first common knowledge, so I will not talk about it. That's not the point here. I'm gonna focus on each of the vinyl releases that Death Like Silence published over the few years of its existence, as I think that uh, all the albums they put out were nothing short of immortal masterpieces, which left an indelible mark in the history of metal. So, the entire DSP uh, catalog, uh, vinyl catalog, uh, consists of six records only. The first one of which uh, being uh, Merciless debut The Awakening LP, which came out in 1990. Actually, the cover uh, says 1989, but that's when the album was actually recorded. It was not before 1990 that it was actually made available for purchase. And it was limited to a uh, thousand copies. This is sort of a tradition that DSP kept for all the releases. They were all pressed in a thousand units, um, in the original run at least. So, um, there actually are two different pressings of this uh, album. The easiest way to tell which is the very first 1990 press is to take uh, to have a look at the back cover. Now, uh, the very first rung should not include the Voices of Wonder address at the very bottom. You see that it's... Ah, uh, my cat is really giving me nightmares today. Yeah, it should not include the uh, Voices of Wonder uh, address that you can see at the very bottom. <laughs> Ah, Jesus. Go away. Yeah, I really want to play, but unfortunately, I have no time right now. Ah, leave me alone. So, yeah, um, that's the Voices of Wonder um, address that I'm talking about at the very bottom of the record. Go away, please. I'm recording. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, actually the sign that you are uh, owning a second press, um, which was released in 1993, right before the Voices of Wonder distribution company took over. Um, other than that, I would say that the two pressings are virtually identical. Uh, same inner notes, uh, same printed in a sleeve, which I'm gonna show you. If my cat allows me to. Yeah, that's exactly the same. It comes on uh, uh, regular black vinyl. Speaking of which, uh, if you ever see colored uh, DSP vinyl around, you can be 100% positive they are not originals. DSP never made colored vinyl, so be very careful with that, guys. Uh, musically speaking, I would say um, this is, of course, uh, an undisputed classic of the Death Thrash subgenre. Now, if you ask me, is this the very best Merciless album? Uh, um, I still think that uh, their third record, Unbound, from 1994, uh, is where the band absolutely peaked. For some reason, I was never the biggest fan of The Awakening, mainly because of its muddy production. Uh, I like the songs more the way they were played and recorded on the Realm of the Dark demo tape. I think The Awakening ended up sounding a little bit too close to uh, Creator's Pleasure to Kill, which of course is not a bad thing per se, but if I had to choose a Merciless record to bring with me in my bag if I was stranded to a desert island, that would be Unbound, no question about it. So, the second DSP uh, vinyl release is the infamous Burzum. Uh, debut album, dating back to 1992. Um, needless to say, this is yet another absolute masterpiece of the genre. I mean, no matter what you think about Varg, you will have to give him credit for coming up with something really unique and original. You can trust me, back in 1992, uh, there was no band sounding the way that Burzum did on this record, which was really one of its kind at the time, and in my opinion, it aged fairly well over the years. 
there are actually uh, once again two different DSP editions on the second hand market and the one you're seeing right now is the very first press from 1992 once again limited to a thousand copies and once again let's see how to tell the very first press from the others well once again you have to uh, take a look at the back cover the first run again does not include the Voices of Wonder address anywhere and instead comes with Varg's own address uh, on the left side. And also the inside of the sleeve uh, in the very first pressing is white, I mean grey. Um, it's just a regular inner sleeve. Whereas the second one from 1993 is pitch black. And uh, also, um, gotta say that a very, very limited amount of copies um, included the lyrics sheet as well, which I'm gonna show you right now. This is the lyrics uh, sheet which was included in uh, only a handful of copies, I would think no more than 200, perhaps in the best case scenario, I think it was 300. Uh, needless to say, uh, to find the very first press, including the lyrics ins insert is nowadays an insanely hard and expensive uh, thing. Don't expect to find one for less than, uh, I would say, mm, 600 in the best case scenario. This is a very rare LP and prices, in, prices are skyrocketing these days. There's one selling for whooping uh, 1700 on Discogs.com at the moment, so you get the idea. So at this point, I should mention how DSP was the very first label which introduced the um, concept of having inside sleeves painted black. I know this is pretty common to see nowadays, considering that a lot of albums, especially black metal ones, um, they are pressed that way. Uh, but back then, it was a very, very uh, special and mega cool thing to do. It really gave the album uh, a special vibe. You really felt like you had a dark and obscure record in your hands. And of course that effect got somehow lost over the years as the idea was abused by way too many labels around. But back in the early 90s it was definitely something new and totally unexpected. And the very first record which included this trick was the Death Crush reissue, which came out in early 1993. And this specific record was covered in one of the previous videos which you might want to check out. Uh, there isn't really much to be added other than that um, it comes yeah with a ninja sleeve which is black as you can see and uh, yeah it's basically a ratio of the 1987 original um, Poser Corps LP uh, which uh, got sold out very quickly so they decided to re-release it uh, via uh, Death Like Silence Productions a couple of years later. So moving on to the following record uh, the next one is definitely one of the coolest uh, records uh, ever pressed, in my opinion. It's Abruptum's uh, Obscuritatem Ad Voco Amplectere Me, guys. And uh, gotta say, regardless of its musical content, which of course is a very hit or miss thing, uh, the way this LP is presented in its original first press is absolutely priceless. It's completely 100% pitch black on both front and back cover, as you can see. No details uh, whatsoever, very, very minimalistic feel to it, not just on the jacket itself, I'm gonna show you on the actual record as well. Um, there's no info whatsoever printed on the central label. Uh, the only info we have here is on the inner sleeve. Uh, on one side we have the huge band logo, and on the other side, a couple of pics uh, on the classic uh, no fun, no motion, no core, no trends symbol, which was sort of a trademark for DSP releases. Uh, I guess if their intention was to release the blackest record ever, uh, the mission is totally 100% uh, accomplished. Um, at least with this very first press, because there's actually a second run which came out, I think, around the same time as the first press. Uh, um, I don't have it in my personal collection. They basically took the artwork of the inner sleeve with a, a giant logo of the band and replicated it on the regular jacket instead. It still looks cool, but somehow I would say more generic in a way, so I would recommend hunting for the very first press, as it's very, very unique for the reasons I exposed. Uh, bear in mind that once again, just like all DSP vinyl, 
Uh, this is yet again another pricey record. Uh, the first pressing, the one that you are seeing right now in my hands, uh, sold for as much as I think 350 euro on uh, discos.com. The second one is currently listed for 200, so either way, it won't be cheap. But then again, this could be a nice birthday gift for your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. So in case there are many record collectors, you will definitely make them happy. And also, in my opinion, it's not out of context to look upon these records as real works of art, as the way they are presented is so uh, original and cool. I mean, I, I can probably imagine an LP like this being displayed in a modern art museum in a not so distant future, so there's definitely some value for your money here. The LP we have next is the actual uh, uh, second to last uh, uh, DSP vinyl release. It came out once again in 1993, which was a busy year for the label. And that's Burzum Aske Mini LP. Uh, this is yet again another release which acquired cult status in the metal community. Uh, musically speaking, this is definitely one of the strongest Burzum records. It has a more uh, rocking vibe than the debut album, which uh, with very, very simple and yet extremely catchy riffs. Uh, it includes a new version of the classic A Lost Forgotten Sad Spirit, which was already one of the best songs of the first LP. And trust me, this new version is uh, even cooler and nicer. Unlike the previous records, uh, this album was only released once and limited as usual to a thousand copies. Uh, once again, we have the very cool uh, black inner side, as you can tell. Um, this time the um, no fun, no core, no low, no mosh thing uh, included this anti lave stuff, which was kind of funny back in the day. Um, the interesting, the interesting thing about this uh, Ask a Mini LP is that about 300 of them came with a Zippo lighter, which was once again a pretty funny idea, considering that of course this was released at the time of the church burnings in uh, Norway. Um, I mean. Uh, as you can tell, the, the cover art is uh, directly referring to the church burnings. Uh, my own copy um, came without a lighter, which was, of course, a very cool add-on. But yeah, my copy, for some reason, didn't include it. Uh, even like that, in order to find one these days, you should be prepared to fork out big money. Talking about five, six, maybe even 700 euro, uh, or even more, depending on its conditions which is really a ludicrous amount of cash uh, for a single record. I remember I remember buying this for like 10 bucks when it was originally released, but that's of course how the market works. There's a lot of people after this record, so it's not surprising the slightest bit that uh, prices are uh, really, really steep for this one. Uh, as you can see, my copy was signed by... No, it was not signed, actually. I had a copy which was signed by Thomas from uh, Emperor, who played bass guitar on the album, but supposedly not this one. And last, this is the very last record officially released on vinyl by DSP, and that's the mighty The Mysteries Dom Satanas LP by Mayhem, in its original uh, Gatefold Press. Uh, this was actually published after Euronymous passed away. It was still released under the DSP logo, as you can tell, it's a Death Like Silence production. Um, even though it, it, it's clear that at this point in time, uh, Oystein was no longer in charge of things, and the Voices of Wonder people instead uh, took over the business. Uh, Voices of Wonder used to be the Norwegian distributor for DSP releases, and they released the last batch of albums which Euronymous had planned. Uh, the first one being, in fact, The Mysteries. The thing with the original vinyl press of this record is that uh, it has this weird red wine tone in the cover artwork, as opposed to the CD press, which I'm showing you right now. Uh, this is the original CD press, which as you can see is blue. Uh, I mean, uh, it pictures the Nidaros Cathedral Trondheim, as you know, but to be honest with you, I never quite got why there's this uh, difference in color between uh, the CD version and the vinyl version of the album. If you have more precise info, of course, feel free to share it in the notes. As far as the pressing quality is concerned, uh, this is uh, completely flawless. Extremely glued, uh, I mean, clo close to absolute perfection. 
uh, really nice gatefold jacket, perfect sound quality. Uh, this is by far the best edition that uh, you can possibly find on the market. This is exactly how the album was supposed to uh, sound and look like back in 1994. Uh, perhaps one small thing that I'm personally not that happy about uh, is that uh, uh, this is the only DSP LP whose jacket is not printed on glossy paper. Um, it comes on regular cardboard. And uh, as you can see, uh, as a result, I mean, uh, most of the copies I've seen around aren't in perfectly pristine conditions. Uh, most of them have a slight uh, ring wear. I'm not sure if you can see it from a copy. My own copy does have a slight ring wear as well. Um, which again, uh, I mean, could be slightly annoying because I don't want to repeat myself, but we're talking about uh, ultra expensive records here. This is again a record which will probably drain your bank account. Um, once again, in the five, six hundred range of things, if not more. Of course, when you're paying such an outrageous load of money for a record, you'd expect it to be in mint conditions. But sadly, with this album, uh, you will have to struggle a little bit harder uh, for a copy in perfect conditions. So, DSP published the total amount of six vinyl records, as I said. Three more albums were released uh, on CD back in uh, uh, 1994 and only came on vinyl many years later thanks to labels which uh, sometimes did an excellent job of replicating the original DSP layout, sometimes not so much. For instance, the second Abruptum album uh, was recently released on vinyl by uh, Swedish uh, Blood On Productions but I've seen it uh, and... Uh, oh my god, Cat is really giving me hard times. Yeah, um, it was released uh, uh, literally a couple of weeks ago by Swedish Blood Down Productions. Uh, I saw it, I had it in my hands. Uh, I don't like the fact that they uh, slightly altered the fonts and the cover artwork. I'm sort of a Taliban purist uh, when it comes to racius. Uh, in my opinion, this should be kept as faithful to the original as possible, which is why I'm sticking to my old uh, CD press. Both the enslaved uh, Viking Liger Veldi album and Sai Scornly Fit uh, were instead uh, re released properly. Um, I think uh, this one dates back to 2001, something like that, on Vinyl Collector's uh, label. Uh, you can still find both these editions at uh, more or less regular prices. Uh, the enslaved one, which I'm currently showing you right now, is especially very, very well done. Um, these are not original DSP releases, but then again, the music, of course, comes first. Uh, so as long as you're enjoying the album, whatever alleged version you have is uh, absolutely perfect, guys. So once again, guys, uh, that's it for this time. Uh, hope you find this new trip back in time informative enough. Again... I want to stress that this is the main com concept behind the channel to share some useful knowledge concerning metal vinyl. Uh, so I hope you appreciate the effort. And if you do, of course, please subscribe to the channel and share the videos. Till the next time, keep it loud and heavy.